Um, this is about a lady who was referred to in the viral video that we've seen in the last uh, week or 10 days. A lady from Goa was spoken, spoken out against a prime minister and particularly about his uh, Rajasthan Banswada speech, uh, which has come under a vast uh, you know, criticism from different sections in the country uh, for right reasons. And uh, so who's this lady who decided to speak out against the prime minister? Uh, what were the reasons? What prompted her to do this? And importantly, who is she? Is something that we are going to understand today. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to uh, this uh, chat, uh, Ms. Dev Surabhi Vedwanshi. And that's something that I've learned. Thank you so much. We the lady from Goa. And today we would like to understand uh, what made you make this video? And before that, do tell us about yourself. And uh, we've heard that uh, you have multiple degrees and you're a highly qualified communication professional and uh, that you have uh, a first generation uh, politician who decided to get into politics. And you're the daughter of an IAS officer, very senior IAS officer. And uh, that's the background that we've heard. And we'd like to hear from you and uh, who are you and uh, what prompted you to make this video thank you yeah well thank you ashokji uh first of all before uh anything that i am or any degree that i may have i am an indian citizen uh and that is the fundamental truth uh on why i decided to speak up uh and address the prime minister of india directly um Given that the, the background that I've had, I come from the corporate sector. Uh, I'm a marketing professional. Uh, I've handled communications for various companies and uh, things like that. I, I did notice that uh, there's a lot of concerted uh, strategic narrative building that is taking place uh, by the Bharti Janta Party. Um, not only in the past decade, but before uh, they came to power in 2014 too. So um, <clears throat> once I realized uh, what's uh, what's really happening and what's at stake, uh, and I saw the negative repercussions of their destructive policies uh, around me, um, it, whether it is uh, youth unemployment or even in my sphere, I, I used to be a business owner, uh, how uh, the GST uh, was affecting business owners and myself included um so uh, multiple uh you know milieu of reasons why i decided to enter politics and this particular video that i made um uh, was uh, because of what i heard in banswara Rajasthan. it was um i had never imagined in my life that i could hear uh you know the prime minister of india someone of that stature, someone who heads our country, who represents our country, making such uh, communal and divisive uh, statements uh, in his speech. Of course, politics, when elections come around, it's very charged up and people are talking about a lot of, a lot of things. But this is on some other level altogether, which is clearly in the area of being unconstitutional and even seditious. So that's the reason why I decided to speak up because um, I find it entirely unacceptable and unconstitutional that uh, a, a, a part of our population, in this case, the Muslims, and even through other speeches of theirs where they call Christians rice back converts and demonize them and the Muslims, um, you are treating a section of your citizens as less than human and uh you know pushing the narrative that they don't deserve uh, any rights or equal treatment which is counterintuitive and uh, completely opposite to what the constitution says um so this uh you know people needed to realize that every single communal divisive statement that comes out from the mouth of the prime minister uh, has been extremely unconstitutional uh, and going against the very ethos uh, of our country uh, as a nation. Uh, so that's what prompted me to speak up. Uh, 
the prime minister's speech itself uh, in in many ways is seen as a falsification uh, firstly he is actually misquoting the then prime minister dr manmohan singh uh, who was speaking about the depressed sections of the society and he was basing his the, the, the whole thing was on the if i am not wrong this achar committee recommendations in which it was pointed out that there are sections of the society which starts from the adivasis the dalits uh, the obcs and minorities like muslims who have been deprived of the resources and it is in that context that dr singh was talking about the that those who are deprived need to get the first preference because they have been deprived and if you are talking about social justice the basis of social justice is equitable resources and that speech was taken out of context that speech uh, which is shocking to the country i mean anyone who is in the country whether even i'm sure it must have shocked even the bjp netas trust me and uh, that uh, he it goes to the extent of saying that no 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 uh, it will all be snatched away from you and uh, given away to a section where the speech is is not even referring to any such thing and uh, coming to the uh, while attacking the congress manifesto again there is a lot of falsification that is happening uh, as as a youngster tell me is the falsification it has worked in the past 10 years unfortunately there is no denying that fact is it working anymore the short answer no it's not working anymore it was but now it's not anymore um because um you know the the ineptness of this government or rather the concerted effort in breaking down our uh, economy our social fabric uh, and our constitutional institutions um there is always a tipping point in any given scenario and uh, they crossed that tipping point once the electoral bond scam came out um and if, ever since that that scam was uh, exposed um it's just been the breakdown of bharatiya janata party and they knew it that that was a juggernaut uh, that they can no longer control uh, or manipulate uh. so everything now has become um, you know everything that is coming out from about them uh, is is now sticking in people's minds uh, and i'm very happy about that because we we who have been in the opposition uh we've been speaking about these things from a long time because we saw signs of it we know what their ideology is what they stand for and what you rightly uh, pointed out that when dr manmohan singh made that particular speech it was a very um i salute him for that speech because um the very idea and the basis of our indian constitution is justice uh, that includes social uh justice for mostly so when you have findings of a committee where you see that certain segment of society is lagging behind and does not have access to resources uh as others do in the community or in the country um you would of course on the basis of the constitution itself uh, the idea emanating from the constitution that you would ensure that those people who are not getting access and it's not just the muslims it's it's the dalits it's the uh, uh, adivasis uh, it's it's the women of india so many um, stakeholders in india in segments of society are not getting access to resources equitably and what is the harm in saying all of this and for sure he did not say that the muslims have the first right that's an entire obfuscation of facts um and a complete falsification uh of course he had to say uh, that lie because he was addressing uh his core voters you know and of course trying to instill fear in in the minds of hindus that if you vote for congress this is what's going to happen to you your resources your uh everything is going to be snatched away and given to muslims whereas uh, the real story is that uh, the modi regime has been snatching away people's wealth their resources uh over the years cheating the people out of their part uh, in this democracy 
and now they want to blame their crimes on muslims or they're going to find a scapegoat in christians so this entire phenomenon that we see uh, by this regime is constant scapegoating others for the crimes that they themselves commit so every time actually now whenever i hear the speech from modi if he's blaming someone for something uh, it it is actually him admitting that he has done it <laughs> but he is blaming it on someone else so uh, that particular speech and ever since uh, modi i i read that article where you know they fact checked five days of his uh, rallies and every single time that he has attacked the manifesto of congress first of all i would like to point out um i don't think in the history of politics uh, in human history uh, has there ever been a ruling regime that has attacked the opposition's manifesto in the way that they are doing that in itself is a phenomenon which is which is so weird why do you need to attack the manifesto of the opposition <laughs> you are in power so what what fear do you have inside you that this manifesto is actually going to connect with the people that it's actually going to deliver what the people see uh do you feel so scared that you're going to lose power uh this time that uh, you are out and out completely obfuscating telling lies escape voting uh and building a whole castle of lies about the manifesto of congress and and what they are going to do with this country and how they're going to destroy it so that's the actual reality uh, of what we are seeing when we see modi uh, modi falsifying uh, these statements about the congress and its manifesto indeed uh, because uh, scroll has uh, actually listed uh, these 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 lies over the last few days uh and uh, some of them are uh, hideous and even ludicrous to say the least because it says that if you have a box of bajra in your house uh, that congress should snatch it away and give it to someone else i was just thinking in a country like ours <laughs> it's a lot more easier to go to the food corporation of india and take that box and give it to whomever you want is logistically speaking than go to each home raid that home because you have to find that bajra you have to raid that home and uh, imagine th- this is the this is the level of this is even by whatsapp university university standards this must be hideous uh, but it is said unfortunately and this is said by uh, uh, the most unfortunate part like you said uh, the prime minister of uh, largest democracy that is the tragic part and uh, so this has been uh, happening and on the other side uh, we also have a model code of conduct which clearly uh, you know stops anyone from making any kind of statement against any kind of community uh, whether linguistic religious or otherwise you are not supposed to be pitting one community against the other uh, but here he takes the name of uh, muslim community and uh, he calls them names like uh, gusbetia uh, or an infiltrator and uh, goes to the extent of uh, you know saying jinke zyada bachche hote hain bachche hote hain zyada bachche paida karte hain again which is again uh, falsification uh, because the fertility rate uh, of muslims has come down everywhere and uh, also in, in in the south uh, than in the north because north across communities the fertility rate is far higher than south now this is a fact there's nothing to do with communities and it has more to do with the socio economic factors and this is again proven worldwide and uh, particularly the education of women has a bigger role in bringing down fertility rates and south the women are, are much more uh, educated uh, muslims are otherwise and therefore the fertility rate of uh, uh, in fact the fertility rate of uh, muslim women in in south is far lesser than the hindu women in the north and uh, this is this is this this is what the stat says now to what extent can we go on because this is a lie that uh, the sangh parivar has been spreading for over a century you know and he is only repeating uh, that that lie uh, most unfortunate in spite of being the prime minister now to be repeating this lie but coming to the uh, mcc and uh, 
having very clearly violated, unfortunately, the election commission sent a notice to Mandaji and uh, when the prime minister is actually making the statement and uh, people had actually forgotten Nadaji. Now suddenly we all remember there is Nadaji somewhere because he's so well <laughs> and uh, he sends a letter we are reminded, oh, there is Nadaji too. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is the sadness and the tragic uh, part of the whole thing. Do you think he's gone a little too far in dog whistling at a particular community uh, this time? Has he really gone too far this time? It's not like he's the first time he's making these statements or any of his party men have said horrendous things, but has he really gone too far? Not a little far. He's gone, he has gone too far. It is, um, it is really despicable the way he dog whistled. We, of course, knew the views that he has, the real views about Muslims that he has uh, for the past decade and more. Uh, when 2002 Gujarat pogrom is a prime example of his views about the Muslim. Um, but even like across this decade of his regime, he has somewhat always been a little careful. He has made veiled remarks, veiled dog whistles, but he has he didn't go all outright uh, and demonize the Muslim community the way he did on Sunday uh, in Rajasthan. This time he's literally gone too far, and him going too far is is a clear sign of how. Uh, how desperate he is and how scared he is uh, this time around that um, the first and second phase both for them have uh, <laughs> been lackluster and completely contrary to what they had expected and and you see the the, the growing desperation uh, in every comment in every rally as each day passes by, you see the increasing desperation uh, in his remark, which started from Rajasthan, of course. Um, and and what you rightly said that this whole thing of demonizing others is, is a very classic RSS uh, thing, and, and it certainly emanates from, from their from their, from their um, you know, leaders, the founding fathers of the RSS, uh, whether it is Gulwalkar or Veer Savarkar, uh, not Veer Savarkar, uh, where they have spoken very clearly uh, about the extermination or destruction of the minorities uh, from India. They have listed it out. The Christians, the Muslims, and the communists are the enemy of uh, India, and they should not exist in India. So it's coming from there. It's very clear where it's coming from. Um, and, and it is very clear also that their entire agenda rests on the fact that once you demonize a certain section of society, then they can come into the position uh, of telling the people that, okay, this is a threat to you and it is us who's going to save you from them. So the entire game in a simple form, if I have to explain it, it is just this, that they basically want to stay in power because they are absolutely corrupt and they want to continue with this sole regime of corruption. And how they do, how they want to do it is by, uh, by instilling fear in the Hindu community that see, here are these segments of society which are going to take away your resources, they're going to take away jobs from you, they're going to take away everything that you already have, Bajra. plus more than that. Don't forget the box of Bajra. Bajra. Yeah, they're going to take away your Bajra also. Uh, and, and we are the only ones. We are the only ones who are going to save you from this destruction that's coming your way. Forgetting that they already have left so much destruction in their wake in the past decade. And it's not small amount of destruction. It's immense. We are looking at you know, 65.7% unemployment rate amongst our youth, which amounts to 83% of our entire, <clears throat> the overall unemployed people in India. It's huge. The crimes against women, uh, those figures have gone through the roof. 
uh, inflation and price rise we are looking at uh, you know common goods uh, being almost three or four times the price when they were in uh, 2014 so these are their creation it's all been manufactured by them and then now they are going around telling people that oh you are at risk and we are the ones who are going to be your saviors so please vote for us i mean there has to be like hypocrisy bhi ki bhi koi seema hoti hai ya nahi hoti hai that's that's uh, that's what i think these uh, there are uh, many of the memes are mocking him as calling him the star campaigner of congress because apparently uh, his his intervention has led to uh, some 40 odd <laughs> lakh manifest of copies being downloaded and uh, so uh, there is obviously a panic <laughs> and, uh, if i remember correctly i think uh, there's an article by salil on this uh, saying that uh, the narrative is clearly being set by the opposition for once and they are not actually on the defensive it is it is the government uh, which is on the defensive and that's that's why they are uh, trying to attack with everything and the desperation is showing and since they can't find any facts uh, they are relying on falsification of facts uh, because five guarantees that the manifesto uh, in question uh, that of the congress uh, seems to be entirely based on the constitutional guarantees it's basically what's in the constitution uh, whether it is concerning women uh, whether it's concerning social justice or uh, youth uh, it's all about the constitution so uh, in a way by attacking this manifesto uh you are attacking the constitution okay yeah. so uh, i mean you could have spoken about everything else which i can understand uh, but <laughs> simply going into this uh, manifesto and cooking up stories such as you know uh, something will be snatched away something will be given away where there is no such reference in, in, anywhere in the in the manifesto um there is also a point where one is reminded of the history so when you when you, when you look at the history where to see the doubt about a community convert it into a fear with, with some amount and then a fear turns into hatred and before you realize the hatred has broken into violence and whatever so this is the, here is a pattern and that pattern is something that rss is very familiar, familiar with and anyone who comes from that school is also very familiar with so uh, while what he is doing does not surprise anyone who has seen the politics of uh, right wing politics in india or elsewhere it does not surprise him whether it is trump saying things or whether this man saying things uh, end of it seems to be the same it comes from the idea of segregation and that brings me to a interesting question see uh, uh, i'm not sure about your generation but at least uh, the generation before that uh, there was always politics was always seen as left right and center broadly right and uh, when i again look back at the freedom struggle those lines seem to have blurred somewhere yeah there were there were there were communists inside congress there were socialists inside congress in fact some of the tallest socialists including the uh, prime minister of the country were inside and those who worked for the uh, constitution were they were fabian socialists like dr baba saheb himself so when you look at uh, what is happening today has that line blurred completely there's no left right center anymore it's about those who stand with the constitution and those who are working against the constitution does your generation see it that way mm. i surely see it that way uh, i don't know about my generation um, because very sadly uh, i don't see people my age uh, really engaging with politics or even being interested in it to begin with so this question how does my generation feel is a very uh, i think it's in the dark i i still don't know myself i would perhaps have to go around and ask people what do they feel but i surely feel that this time um or at least in the past 10 years it has been a run up to this point where um uh, it has clearly become bifurcated in indian politics uh, whether you are standing against the indian constitution or whether you are standing with the indian constitution because 
as you must have seen and all of us have witnessed it, uh, whether it is union ministers in his cabinet, uh, whether it is other member of parliaments or leaders or MLAs, we have seen repeated calls for the ousting of the Indian constitution uh, and also uh, change, removing the word secular from our preamble uh, or you know changing it altogether. So we've had a plethora of statements where they have actually very clearly and openly spoken against the Indian constitution and expressing their desire to completely do away with it. So yes, the politics right now is not divided between <laughs> left, center, and right, but it has clearly become uh, this binary of whether we, you are for the Indian constitution or you're against it. And for sure, I, I would I would say this that majority of Indians believe in the Indian Constitution. Although I do believe that our secularism is uh, mostly skin deep, <laughs> but uh, the the very idea of our Constitution has uh, it's it's not a just a document, and it was certainly never uh, an unnatural thing for us because. It's a very Indian thing. It has emanated from our culture. It has emanated from uh, who, who we have been, what we stand for. We are a country that, you know, today these people, like, I'll just take one minute to make this point, and I want, I wanted to speak about this very openly. We've been under centuries of Mughal rule. We were, again, under centuries of British rule. Our entire population did not become Muslim when we were ruled by Mughals. We were still Hindu majority. We were ruled by Britishers who were Protestants, uh, Christians. We are, are a, a majority of the community uh, or population was again Hindu. When we got independent, majority of our population was Hindu. Today also we are majority uh, Hindu at 80 percent almost. So where is this idea coming from that our, our culture uh, is, is not in line with the constitution? This is a completely falsified uh, statement and it goes against everything that we have as in our culture, like the Ganga Jamuna Tehzeeb that we have in the North whether in the state that I come from, Goa, we have a very, uh, and I'm not whitewashing the bad parts of history. Of course, there have been, uh, you know, with the rollings of history, wars happen, uh, you know, destruction happens. I'm not whitewashing all of that. But by and large, we've, we've come to be a very uh, homogenous culture today. Uh, which has references and intermingling from so many different religions. Like if, if you today want to speak about like something romantic, something in Urdu comes to your mind. And so, you know, you cannot cut away what the BJP is trying to do is literally trying to hack away parts of the body that India is and say that we should be in a certain way. Whereas you are literally hacking away parts of the body and essential organs of the body uh, in the process. And, and that is uh, extremely problematic. So looking at uh, uh, the future, um, so to speak, the democratic progressive forces coming together uh, in defense of the constitution, which is happening in an unprecedented way. And uh, in this election, I haven't, I've seen elections, many elections. I've never seen uh, civil society being so much a part of an electoral mm -hmm. process and active part of it and, and doing whatever they can uh, with uh, meager or no resources. Uh, I've heard that you are, you are part of a civil society movement uh, yourself. Uh, what kind of a future do you see for those uh, uh, who believe in constitutional politics? Um, I would really say that our Indian constitution stands for truth. 
and the truth uh, is that as human beings we are all one and we all despite our diversity and different characters and our beliefs and languages and regions we are all fundamentally human beings and that's that's what our constitution defines and actually captures so our constitution is not going anywhere of course uh, it has been undermined extremely by this regime uh, and almost made irrelevant uh, on many occasions but the fact remains that there are people huge number of people like if if i would tell you that you are also aware that the fact that someone like me is sitting in goa what i am speaking about the constitutional values and i am addressing something to the pm and you know it's it the basis of it was about constitutionality and uh, things like that if my video can go viral uh, it's not a, it's not an expensive you know high funded whatsapp network like the bjp has invested into it's the people who spread it right it's the people their desire of seeing that someone is speaking the truth that's what made it go viral and i'm extremely grateful for that but i don't see uh, it as oh i achieved something big it is achievement of the people and and it is the biggest example of how and why the indian constitution is going to prevail because the people uh, if, even if they are not speaking up openly in their hearts they know that what this regime is doing is absolutely wrong and against our indian constitution so our constitution will not only will prevail it has prevailed already and that is exactly what is making this regime so so scared right now and so desperate thank you so much for joining us and i hope you continue to make these videos and enlighten us have uh, express views on our behalf because uh, one of the reasons why i felt your video was viral is because people could identify their voice being voiced through that video and uh, the, that's that's what i could sense because i felt it in parts when i saw that because like these are things that i would like to tell the honorable prime minister please you know uh, spare a thought thank you so much and wish you the very best good day thank you mattashtu vishesha video galannu nodalu mattu hosa video gala bagge tiliyalu idina.com youtube channel subscribe maadi mattu bell icon click maadi